So you're either self-employed, have an LLC, C Corp, S Corp, some kind of business. Jen, what would you say is the number one document that we need from businesses and people that are self-employed? We need the profit and loss. Absolutely. And what is the profit and loss, Jen? It's a document that shows your income and your expenses that you had for the year for your business. What kind of income does the profit and loss provide? Great question. So whenever you're in business, all businesses are different. Whether you're a self-employed real estate agent, your local plumber, or your business does whatever. The type of income, number one, could be reported on a 1099 to you. And that is something that we are able to pull up on a transcript. But you must protect yourself and include all income that your business earns. Whether you charge cash to your clients, you get checks written out to you, you collect credit cards, or you take a form of any other type of payment, like a crypto transaction. That includes Venmo, Zelle, and other cash apps. The government's starting to track those as well. That's really great, Jen. And on the profit and loss on the income portion, that's where you include it. Now, you see some fancy term called gross receipts. That's just mean your total gross income from all sources. And on the profit and loss statement, you could just break down the types of income and the sources from each. Now let's get into expenses. Ooh, yeah, that's a fun one. What kind of expenses count for our business expenses? You know, there's no black and white answer to this question, unfortunately. But here's the general guide. Your business is unique. Your business is different. And based upon your business operations, and your business could deduct any expense as long as it's reasonable, ordinary, and necessary for your business. What about the home? I see a lot of people that want to use their whole home for their business expense. That could come into play for people that are self-employed as a home office expense. And we just need certain criteria such as, you know, our organizers have that. How big is the house? How big is the square footage of the dedicated area? And there's two different formulas for that. So our organizer will ask the questions how the home office expense could come in. You can't write off your whole house. Mm -hmm. So how about a vehicle? There's so many deductions regarding a vehicle. So this is the information that we want to get from you. Number one is, when did you buy that vehicle? We want to know the amount you purchased it for and the date. If you use it 100% for work, up to 50% for work, we can deduct it as depreciation. And then we can also use mileage. Or we can use actual expenses for that vehicle. So we're going to need, in addition to the, the day of purchase and the amount, would be what's the mileage for the total year that was used on business, any personal mileage used, and as well as what you actually spent to maintain that vehicle. And what we do on this side, we make the appropriate adjustments and make sure that you max out the vehicle deduction. And Jen, so aside from the home office expense and the vehicle expenses, what kind of expenses do most businesses have? Well, they have marketing, advertising, they have meals, generally taking some clients out to dinner. They have utilities, cell phone, internet. You also have legal and professional fees, such as if you paid a tax firm to <laughs> handle your tax matters. And then you can fill out your profit and loss statement for us with those expenses. Hey Sergio, what are the other alternative methods we can use? Okay, if you don't wanna go through your own bank statements and credit cards, then you definitely need bookkeeping, historical bookkeeping to go through and do that for you which normally it pulls all the data from your bank statements and credit cards, and we formalize it, put that within QuickBooks. And then within QuickBooks, we then categorize all the different expenses, and then we generate the reports needed to get the tax filings done. When you're filling out your profit and loss, put in as much information as you can, and we'll go through it and figure out what applies and what doesn't apply. More is always better. And this way we can make the appropriate adjustments for the tax preparation side. Thanks, you nailed it.